Spontaneous pneumothorax is a type of pneumothorax acquired or developed in an absence of trauma. We have two types of spontaneous pneumothorax. That's the primary spontaneous pneumothorax and secondary spontaneous pneumothorax. Primary spontaneous pneumothorax is a type that occurs in patients who have no any underlying lung pathology. And on the other hand, secondary spontaneous pneumothorax is found in patients who have an underlying lung disease or a damaged alveolar pleural barrier. And the most common underlying lung conditions in patients with spontaneous pneumothorax is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or asthma. Spontaneous pneumothorax is more common in males as compared to females in a ratio of 6 to 1 and occurs more commonly in young, thin and tall men. Smokers are also at higher risk of developing spontaneous pneumothorax. There are some patients who have a familiar history of spontaneous pneumothorax, so they have this high chance of developing a spontaneous pneumothorax too. A spontaneous secondary pneumothorax is most common in patients who are older than 40 years and who have underlying lung conditions such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. When look at the causes, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease is the most common cause and this one causes secondary spontaneous pneumothorax. A paraceptal emphysema, cystic fibrosis of the lungs, Marfan syndrome, homocystinuria, subclavian catheterization, scuba diving, and also flying. All these can lead to development of these spontaneous pneumothoraces. In most cases, spontaneous pneumothoraces is not a fatal illness because the air pressure inside the pleural cavity is almost as equal as the atmospheric pressure. You remember that in the pleural cavity, the pressure is usually a negative pressure. The presence of one functioning lung makes this condition not likely to be fatal. The diaphragm is not pushed down in these patients and secondary spontaneous pneumothoraces occurs as a result of a damaged alveolar pleural barrier or an underlying lung problem that can cause an increase in the intrabronchial pressures. Like we mentioned, primary spontaneous pneumothorax occurs in patients without an underlying lung condition as compared to secondary spontaneous pneumothorax which occurs in patients who have underlying lung pathologies. What are the clinical features when assessing a patient with spontaneous pneumothorax? These patients will present with dyspnea of a sudden onset. They'll also complain of a pleuritic chest pain of sudden onset also. On an X-ray, the diaphragm is up and is not displaced as compared to tension pneumothorax. These patients will have either normal or a slightly elevated jugular venous pressure. There is a tracheal shift towards the affected side or sometimes there exists none in case of a mild uh, pneumothorax. Whenever you percuss these patients, you hear an hyperresonant sound in the affected side. And during auscultation, there will be diminished or absent breath sounds on the affected side too. And there is a unilateral atelectasis which occurs because of a loss of negative pleural pressure which results in the lung collapse. And when examining these patients, the findings can range from either unremarkable findings to shock. Like the vital signs will indicate a mild tachycardia and tachypnea in most cases. These patients will also be having an asymmetrical breathing pattern. When you do a chest auscultation, you realize there's a decreased breath sounds or an absent vesicular breath sounds. A percussion will indicate a hyperresonant of the affected lung and a decreased tactile parameters. During palpation, you might realize a tracheal shift towards the affected side and patients with tension pneumothorax present with extremes with hypotension, cyanosis, severe respiratory distress and a tracheal deviation to the contralateral side or the unaffected side. Then a chest x-ray will indicate white pleural lines at the pleural edges and these absent vessel markings on the line, unlike the normal x-ray. The absence of ipsilateral hemidiaphragm if there's a line collapse. You don't really expect 
uh, patients with spontaneous pneumothorax to have ankle edema or cardiovascular compromise.